Welcome to part 2 of this painting guide for some 15 mil figures from Ground Zero Games. These models are Japanese powered infantry. They've had a base spray coat of Games Workshop Chaos Black which has left some uh, metal areas bare because I don't go too heavy on the spray. You can see there's some of the metal showing through. Just inserting an advert here for an Old Crow model's resin base. Uh, you can buy them in packs from the Old Crow website and they fit the Ground Zero games and other ranges of 15mm figures in perfectly. So to cover up those areas of metal which haven't been properly covered by the Chaos Black spray, I'm just using some watered down black, a big brush, and just going over all those areas which you can see there it's still got metal showing. I'm using Privateer Press P3 paints which are a nice range which have a nice liquid pigment that runs nice and smoothly. I'm also using the P3 mixing medium which is this bottle that's being dropped on now on my wet palette. This is my brush, Galleria, uh, Windsor & Newton brush. I tend to use high number brushes, that's the number two, and let them get down into a thin point with quite liquid thin paint. This colour is Hammerfall Khaki from Privateer Press and I'm just going over every raised panel leaving the black in the crevices on these 15mm figures. I'm trying to do a rapid paint job on these models on the stick in one go um, but my painting technique tends to need a couple of coats on the base coat which I'm doing there because I use thin down paint. It's a case of just being patient and working your way through the models doing a complete single pass on all of them and then if you find areas that the paint's a bit too thin on go back over them um, which you can do as you work through the whole set on the stick. These models are stuck to this base with some blue tack, which is a soft tacky material used for mounting posters on the wall. It just makes it easy to stick them on and then pull them off afterwards. I'm finishing the final touches on this model and uh, as you can see the, the primary coat that's gone on there with Hammerfall Khaki is looking a lot more solid now because I've gone over it a couple of times. There are paints on the market which promise one single coat. Um, but I like to work with my paint thinned down a little, which means you often need two coats to go over to get that nice finish. The base coat is the key one for the whole model really, so getting it right is important. I'm now going to use Menoth White Base to do the highlight on the Hammerfall Khaki powered armour that you can see. Because I'm trying to do these rapidly, I'm not doing a lot of shading, I'm just simply highlighting up some key areas just where the light might fall on them. You can see there on the heads, on the panda light powered armour heads. Using one base coat and one highlight colour is a quick way of doing these 15mm models. You don't have to do lots of blending and complicated painting, it's just one base coat and then one highlight shade. I will be washing them with inks later and then doing some final details on there which will sort of bring them into focus a bit. If you're interested in these models, they're available from Ground Zero Games. They're the Japanese powered armour infantry in their 15mm range. Their website is gzg.com and they make regular worldwide shippings. That's the Menoth White base highlight done across all of those models. And you can see it just sort of brings them up a shade. It looks like a bit of light falling on the armour. chosen Traitor Green here for the weaponry which I'm now just putting on. You can see again I use quite thin paint to put it on so it's going to need a couple of coats. At 15mm scale I tend to paint the models with slightly different or contrasting brighter colours for the weaponry. This just makes it easy to recognise what they've got in their hands especially since they're so small on the large table. Camouflage military realism is also great if you're into that. Uh, I just prefer to have something a bit brighter and sci-fi looking. So that's all the weaponry now painted in Traitor Green. This is the only bit of colour mixing I'm going to do. I'm going to use Necrite Green, mix it in with that Traitor Green there to get a lighter shade with the Traitor Green but without going too bright with that Necrite. So I'm just doing bold highlights across those weapon pods and uh, I'll do that on all of the green weaponry which I've painted. 
Painting it on thin again means it's, it's going to blend quite nicely. It's not going to stand out as too bright a contrast against the base coat. Now complete, you can see it uh, brings a little bit more detail onto those weapons than they had before. And they're going to do the hands and grills and other bits and pieces with bootstrap leather. It's quite tough getting into all those nooks and crannies, so in retrospect it probably would have been better to do this before I did the big base coat. So following the method I've done on the rest of the figures, I'm going to highlight one shade onto those brown areas. I'm going to use Sanguine Highlight, which is a red colour. Because I'm going to ink these with a wash later on, I'm not too fussed about the uh, shading and the detailing, but I'm going on with quite a dry brush just to pick out the ridges. So that's the figure's almost done. I think I'll do the base now. I'm using the bootstrap leather again on the base as a base coat, just painting it into all the uh, sandy bits from the pumice stone which I used to base them. After that base coat, I'm going to dry brush them up. To do the highlight dry brush, I'm using Hammerfall Khaki with a very dry large brush just going over that bootstrap leather which brings out a kind of dirty sandy look to the uh, base. Finally on the base I need to tidy up that edge so I'm using a very dark brown and just going around all of the edges of the metal bases which just sharpens them up. Some people might to go black there which looks good but I like to use a dark brown. Onto the washing now and I'm going to use the Thacra Green on the weapons and the Griffin Sepia from Citadel. Brown washing or dipping is really popular at 15mm scale. But what you've got to watch out for is that everything can start looking a bit like a candy apple. Um, so sometimes I like it, sometimes the result isn't as good as I'd hoped. The Griffin Sepia wash will sort of work its way into all of the corners and crevices and just add a little bit of extra shading to the model. Once it's dry, I use Moro White and a very, very fine pointed brush to pick out tiny details on the edges of weapons and the powered armor suit. If you like this white dot technique and you practice it, you'll find that you can add quite a lot of extra detail and definition to a model by just putting tiny dots of white paint on the very edges of weapons and armoured suits. It's a cheap method of panelling really and just bringing out the definition makes them pop a bit more. I have added some fighting piranha graphics decals on some of the shoulder pads and left over from my MechWarrior Battletech days. and. Um, they make some interesting little decals that can fit on this scale of model. Just before I add this static grass from Games Workshop, this is a really fine length that they do called dead grass. I'm going to put a matte dull coat on using Villaggio matte varnish. I splash this stuff all over to protect them. Uh, it goes on in big blobs, but I kind of work it into the corners once it goes on, which gives them a nice seal and a final coat. So after that's complete and they're fully dry, which only takes about 10-15 minutes, I dobbed some glue onto there before putting them into the static glass pot. I've popped them off the wooden stick now so I can put them individually into the grass pot to apply the static grass. Take off the excess, but then blow really hard along the bottom of the base and that'll make the static grass stand on end. So that's the finished squad of Japanese powered armour. They look less like pandas and probably more like teddy bears, but the final result is good enough for me. Definitely look good on the uh, table when I'm using them in a game. Thanks very much for listening in. Uh, once I get these into a game and a, and a battle report, I'll pop something up on YouTube so you can see how they perform on the battlefield.